don't care what you do. Don't leave that hospital without a blood test. So he's like, okay, fine, I'll try. So he goes and he requests for a blood test. He gets a blood test. And so he calls us back and he says, they said the results will be ready in, in two hours. And so, well, okay, we're just talking to him. And then he sees his phone ringing and it had said emergency room. So he's like, ah, my phone is saying emergency room. So my mom is like, pick it, pick it. So he picks it while we're still online and he's like, hello. And then we can overhear, you know, they're like, Mr. Wako, is that you? And he's like, yes. Can you kindly come back to the hospital? He's like, okay, sure. Then they're like, do you have someone to drive you? He's like, yeah, my neighbor. Okay. And then my mom, she's like, I would just ask the nurse what your blood count is, your HP. And then he's like, what's my blood count? So she says four. She says four. What? And then my, my mom is like, mm hmm. Okay, we'll call you, okay? He's like, okay, I'll see you. Then he logs out. My mom just takes a deep breath. She starts praying. <sighs> she starts praying. Mm. So, we don't hear from my brother. Mm. Oh, you know, he's like, okay, I'll let you guys know when I'm at the hospital mm -hmm. what happens, and he hangs up. Mm. And so my mom, she just sits there, mm. you know, mm. and she just takes a deep breath mm. and she just, you know, starts to pray. And, you know, I'm looking at her and I'm like, okay, it's not okay. But, you know, she wasn't, you know, overreacting or anything. So I didn't think much of it, you know, and I didn't ask what's normal. So now that night we're waiting on my brother to call us. He's not calling us back. We can't reach him. His phones are off. And I'm waiting for his neighbor was a friend of mine. Actually, the one who took him to the hospital was one of my sorority sisters. Okay. okay. And I get a call from our uh, friend Sandra. Mm -hmm. She's Kenyan as well. Mm -hmm. And she also goes to the same school. Mm -hmm. And you know those calls that come in at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., you just know. That's a night. It's not good. Mm -hmm. And so she picks up and I'm like, hey. And she's like, Hey, and I could just hear in her voice. She's like, it's your brother. And and I'm like, what, where are you? And she says, I'm at the hospital, he's here. He didn't want me to call you, but I have to, I have to let you know what's happening. And I'm like, just tell me, just tell me, we'll deal with him later. Just tell me what's going on. And she's like, your brother uh, was in ICU he just had seven blood transfusions. He's stable now. But they're saying that his kidneys are gone. And interestingly, at that same moment, my brother, my older brother, is in US for a meeting in Georgia. So about two hours away. And now I'm the one who's received the news first. I'm living with my parents and my sister my older sister, and I don't know who to tell first. So somehow um, it doesn't hit me, or maybe I just, I don't know, I seem to take it. And I say, thanks for telling me, I appreciate that. And I hung up and I pass my parents' room and I go to my sister's room because I think she's the older one. Maybe she's the one who needs to break it to our parents. And so I go to her room and you know i wake her up and i'm like hey i just got a call job's not okay um he's in icu he's just i didn't even finish he's just received hey <laughs> my sister she starts crying and she immediately calls my older brother they are close she now dials him and puts him on speaker you need to go to hospital and she's crying and my older brother is like, what's going on? I don't understand. What hospital? Where are we going? So now she's crying and talking to my older brother. I'm like, huh? I better go tell my parents because now they're going to wonder uh, what's, what's all this commotion? commotion. So I go to their room and, you know, I knock and, and I try to just take a deep breath. And now is when now the tears are beginning to, to fall down my face. And, you know, I go to my mom's bedside and just tap her and, you know, she sits up. And I say, you know, mom, um, Sandra just called, uh, you know, this is what's happening with Joab. He's had seven blood transfusions. They've stabilized him. 
And then as soon as I've given her that report, now I start to cry. So my mom, she just sits up. She just says, okay, we need to pray and you need to be strong. So me, I'm crying and she, she walks up and she begins to pray and I could just hear my dad. Now he's sat up and, and he's just like, what, what, what is this? And long story short, um, my mom, you know, she left for the US almost immediately and my brother, he got there and, you know, now the doctor comes and explains to us uh, or to him, uh, luckily my older brother was there, that, you know, we don't know what has happened to you. Honestly, we don't understand it. It's a miracle. In fact, they were calling him a miracle job when he walked into that hospital, he walked into the hospital and he walked to the reception and the receptionist is like, can I help you? And he says, hi, I'm Mr. Wako. You called me. She just looked up, you're Mr. Wako? And he's like, yes. And she just hit an alarm. And he says, every nurse and doctor in that hospital came like running toward him. Didn't even explain this is an emergency case threw him on a bed, just asked for consent. Sir, allow us. And he's just like, okay. And they rushed him into the ICU immediately. And I think the doctors were surprised that he was walking, that he was alive. And the doctors said if he went to bed that night, he would have died in his sleep. That was how severe it was. And while they're plugging all these machines, he's seeing all these things being plugged and he's, he's looking at everybody and trying to wait for an explanation. They're like, can you hear us? Can you see us? He's like, yeah, I can hear, I can see. What's your name? He's saying his name, my family, it's in Kenya. They are wondering how is this man, you know, talking to us, breathing, living, he should be dead. Mm -hmm. So my brother ended up earning the nickname Superman. Superman. in the hospital mm. uh, because everyone was wondering how how is he alive mm. and and functioning and that was also for me um, I dropped everything CSA place were in the middle of mm. registering it I'm still going back and forth with the NGO board mm. and when I saw that happening to my brother because he's 25 mm. at the time mm doesn't drink, doesn't smoke, mm. he exercises, so very healthy. Mm. And so I just said, I need to go to the US mm. uh, to see my brother. Mm. And so my mother went before me and my dad as well, and then I joined them. And so at this point, I didn't even care. What is happening with everything else? I didn't care. 2015, yeah? Yeah, 2015. Mm. And so we had a conversation now with my other siblings mm -hmm. when it came to donation because we were given options we were told uh, he can be on the waiting list but in the u.s at his age he'll have to be on dialysis for seven years or one of you can donate to your brother and you know we can check if your kidneys are healthy enough if you match we we do it so of course after having we had a we didn't want our parents to influence who decides mm. and also my parents were above the age of donating so none of them they were both crossed out and my father was above my mother has um conditions that don't allow her to so it left me and my sister and my brother mm. so we sat down in a private meeting we talked we shared and in the end i said I will do it. Mm. I will do it. And so I'm the one now who went to the US. Uh, I went through numerous tests. There are about 20 tests. By the time they tell you, okay, you're good to go. So we reached the end where I was told you're good to go. Unfortunately, they found um, like, you know, we all injected this injection. BCG. Yeah, BCG. Mm. So they found the BCG dead virus ah. from the vaccine in my system. From whatever years back? Yes. 
Now, this is an issue because my brother's mm. blood is not his blood. My brother got seven transfusions. Right. So he's carrying the blood of seven, of other, seven people. other people who have never been to Africa. Who have never been. And so if I was to give him my organ, they were afraid that this dead cell could wake up and kill him. So what? receiving that news, we're all like, what does this even mean? mean? Mm. And so I uh, we talked to a few doctors, a few relatives, because there was the option of me going through treatment to clean it out of my system, the option of him going through treatment. And we're like, no, 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 that it's a very intensive treatment. Apparently there are people who have died going through that treatment. So we're like, we're already at a risk. Why would we put ourselves there again? So we decide to leave the US because initially we were going to do the surgery in the US. And my mom is like, let's go to India. Let's hear another opinion. Mm. So come to Kenya briefly. We're With in your India. Well? Yeah, mm. my brother. Mm. And at this point now the family, you know, is fundraising and helping mm. us fundraise because we've used a lot of resources in the mm. US. Mm. Now we need to go to India. Um, and so we now go to India and I go through the same tests again. Again. About 20 of them. And then now I get to the last test which is DNA. Now, DNA. My brother and I, uh, they look at about six different kinds of, I think they call them antigens. Mm -hmm. And so they really like a good match is when the six match, mm. that's perfect. Mm. But most people don't get perfect. Mm. They'll get three out of six, four. Mm. I had one, one out of six. And so it was like, even our DNA, it's like we are not related. <laughs> so it's like I had my granddad from my dad and he had his grandmom from my mom. Like we are, we are looking like strangers. So the doctor was like, wow, this is fascinating, but that's genetics where you can have a family member and their genetics uh, is like a stranger. Mm. I can match more with a stranger than my than, own. Than your own blood, yeah. Yeah, your mm. own blood. Mm. So it was very interesting to see that because my mother ended up having to do a DNA test. Herself. Herself. Uh, to prove to the doctors and the Indian government that I am their mother. And she is our mother. And there's also a whole process of lawyers and oaths and affidavits that I am not selling my kidney and also the fact that mm. i went before i was married i was dating now my husband at that time at 2015 that time. yeah mm. and to have a doctor ask me has your husband given you permission to do this ah, like this is this is my body and i'm not even married thank goodness because if i was that's another story i would need permission from him from him written, written hmm. to give my kidney but Long. That's international law, like it's stupid. <laughs> Man, I couldn't believe it. Mm. I couldn't believe it. And so we're here um, now at the final stages. Now my dad and mom were all in India. Mm. And the process, we ended up living in India for three months. The process took longer than expected because we were there when Prime Minister Modi um, changed the currency. Mm. That was a whole other mess the couples whole. in your story in rima whole. my goodness government affects my life Everything. that's why i'm so passionate systems yeah <laughs> so he wakes up one day at midnight and says these currencies are now illegal uh they will no longer be used mm -hmm. every indian citizen needs to now get the new currency mm -hmm. and sort of what they were trying to do in kenya mm -hmm. when they changed the currencies mm -hmm. Mm. And so people had to declare and mm. take them back. That's mm. the same thing. Mm. But the way India did it, uh, Kenya, we had an idea. Mm. India, it happened pop, overnight. overnight. Mm. So you wake up and you're getting messages. Mm. Uh, this currency is now illegal. You're trying to trade. You have lots of cash in yeah. currency. You're trying to trade with it. You can't. You can't. So they, they surprised the public 
with it. So I didn't realize, but the impact it made, now all the doctors are trying to get money. So mm. they are at the bank. The lines at the bank are kilometers long, like people are going to vote. Mm. No one is in hospital. The nurses are there as well. And then the lines were only for citizens. Mm. There was no line for foreigners. Mm. So we didn't have money. We couldn't have money. We had some dollars, which now we would go and exchange with the neighbors who mm. you don't know. And of mm. course, they're giving you shady deals. Mm. And we had to befriend some shopkeepers around us mm. and say, you know, we live here in this house. We don't have money now, but when we get money, we'll pay you. Otherwise, we are going to starve. And so now we are, we are in that mess, stuck in India, waiting for our operation date. Mm. So How is your bro doing? My bro, and, my bro and I, we were somehow making the best of the moments. Mm. So we had, a, we, what we would do for our pastime mm. is in our, we were staying at Airbnbs mm -hmm. in our apartment. We would mimic what we went through during the <laughs> checkup. So he would pretend to be a patient mm, and, role and I'm the <laughs> role playing. Yeah. And we would have our mom record us. <laughs> and so we would just joke about oh, things. That's nice. Yeah, we mm. would just joke about everything. Yeah, and it's a good way to handle stuff. Yes. Yeah? Mm. Which has taken me mm. far in life. Mm. And when the doctor finally called us and said, Your surgery date is on this day, it was the 28th of November. Mm. And he says, your surgery date is 28th of November, 27, no, not 2017, 2016. Mm. And when he says that, I'm the only one who is like, yes, my parents, both of them are now in a state of, I don't know if it's worry. I don't know. They are both shocked. And mm. also my brother, my brother is also like, I can't believe the day is here. Mm. So on the surgery day, I remember your first of all you're in a room where they they keep you together mm. uh, so my mom is sitting with me on this side of the room my brother and my dad are on that side of the room and there's like a divider but we can open it so me and my brother mm. we're talking the whole night because mm. our surgery is like 8 a.m mm. so we're talking the whole night we can't sleep there's literally a nurse coming in checking my vitals giving me pills i don't know what they are I am the one being given a lot of stuff, you know, just different stuff happening. And then I think the funniest moment now was when nurse comes and, you know, not all of them speak English. So she's with a shaving. So she comes to me, she's like, you know, so my brother is looking at me like, why is she taking you? So she takes me to the bathroom. So you're shaved, right? Mm, mm, you're shaved. Mm, completely. Completely. Mm. There's no hair on you. Mm. And then they put like iodine mm, on you. Mm, mm, mm. And so I walk out of the room and my brother asks me, on a scale of one to 10, how uncomfortable was it? <laughs> and I'm like, 11. 11. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, and I'm next. I'm like, oh. you can do this. Mm. So when they took us to the theater, they you, make you, you... You go both of you. Yeah. Mm. You go both of you. Mm. And so there's like a prep room mm -hmm. before you enter the main theater. Mm. So I rolled in. And I remember my brother, he's looking like he's panicking. He's worrying me. I am excited because I am like, this is what we have come for. Mm. Today's the day, mm. you know, finally, we can get over with this and we go home. And so I look at my brother and I tell him, the only thing I want you to do is accept my kidney. Accept it. Because there are transplants that happen and bodies reject. Oh. I'm like, accept it. I have given it to you. Please take it. And he looks at me and he's like, okay. And then at that point, they start giving you papers that basically you're signing and saying, if I die, I am here at my own will. So you're there signing your own death manenos. And so they roll me out and me, I'm excited. I am like this, I am waving to everybody. I'm waving to my mom. They're looking through a glass window. And I'm like, I will see you guys on the other side. And my brother is just like, <laughs> He's looking at me like, I want to cancel this whole thing. And yeah, I wake up hours later, hours later, and my body feels like I have been run over by a bus. What a lot of people don't say is that 
the donor actually feels more pain than the recipient because your body wakes up and it actually recognizes one of us is missing and so i could feel my whole body panic like i could feel my blood rushing my brain wondering where is where is it where is it and at this point i could feel like you know you're in theater so it's ice cold mm. so i'm touching my hand i'm literally feeling like my flesh is ice like mm. and then i am cold cold mm. so i start shivering like i'm shaking on this bed like as i'm coming to and i see my mom and i'm like i'm cold and so she covers me with a blanket and she's like it went well he accepted it and i'm like thank god and so she walks out then my dad comes in and she's like you know i'm so proud of you i love you he's okay and so i remember at this point where in the room that's it's not really icu but it's still critical care and i don't see my brother my brother is in the hdu mm. he's in his own room his own sort of space mm. because his immunity is very low mm. so they have to minimize how many people mm. so another thing people don't say is immediately after a transplant i must walk mm. so i'm literally still bleeding mm. from stitches i am feeling immense pain mm. and a nurse comes and she says we have to walk we have to walk get up get up and you're trying to you you feel like you have never walked in your mm. life like mm. your body is so heavy and she's like you must walk and so it's also for your body to get used to, to start get starting traumatized over. this mm. new this is the new normal mm. and your brain needs to start figuring yep. out mm. this is how we are this mm. is how we're going to be mm. and so as i'm doing this walk and slowly walking and my parents are, are there and i say i want to see him i want to see my brother so they're like oh wow you're strong okay it's on the other wing so can you will will you in mm. so they take me on the bed and so as far as the bed could reach his room the bed can't so they're like do you want to step and see him mm. i'm not allowed to no one was allowed to enter his room mm. Mm. so i'm like yeah <laughs> let me go and see him so i stand and i'm dragging myself with the doctor and there's this small window, window. and my brother is in vip he's over there watching a movie <laughs> he's over there chilling and so i knock on the window and i wave at him and he looks at me like he asks me how oh, what? Like, <laughs> how are you on my window <laughs> oh. he's looking at me like he's like you're crazy <laughs> And then I'm so happy to see him and I'm like we did it. Oh. Yeah. So now he's okay. You gave he accepted. He accepted. He's mm. had <laughs> on say my kidney, but he's had uh his kidney mm. now for 6 years. Mm. Yeah. He calls his kidney princess. And so we always joke because I'm always like I'm sure your kidney is going through the first few months it went through an environmental shock mm. because me I was like I am the drinker. I am always out. I I eat whatever. And him is all this other. He's clean. <coughs> he's water. He's healthy diet all the time. So we used to laugh. I'm like I'm sure that kid has never seen so much water <laughs> in its life. So, yeah, he's fine. Now. Oh, that's that I don't know. That I don't know what to say. That is just amazing and and uh I've never had such a story before and hearing it that when you being that is <laughs> is amazing saving a life um and it makes sense then that these other things were not pri- big priority how was you had on, had you start you said you had begun dating mm-hmm. your now husband at the time how is your relationship going with all this being away mm. and all what is your happening in your life and then we'll come back now to see us at place you know um billion i really there's a night mm. um when we're in india mm. I was so frustrated with how we were stuck and I was just like I just want this to be over so we were having we first of all we were dating while I was in US we ah. actually so long distance yeah hmm billion first of all mm-hmm. <laughs> we have we have different versions 
of how you met. Of how we met. Yeah, 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 yeah that's true. That that means you're <laughs> supposed to be together. <laughs> Different versions. He seems to have seen me first, yeah. but I, I never noticed him. Yeah. Uh, but then, so that time when he saw me, he sent me a message in my DM yeah. on on okay. Facebook. Mm-hmm. And I never saw it because I was so busy, you know, with mm. CSO Place and life. <laughs> Who has time for men? Who has time? No time? Yeah. So now when I'm in the US, now yeah. I'm like, okay. Yeah. No, I'm not working on CSO Place, yeah. nothing. Yeah. So now that's when I started going through my Facebook messages. messages. You see this? And then, yeah. Mm-hmm. Then I say, oh, Billion messaged me like mm. months ago. Mm. And so I finally respond. I'm like, hey, how are you? I'm actually not around. And so now talking to him, he was like, I thought you were just, you know, playing hard to get, you're mm. ignoring me. Being and so, snob. yeah, mm. being a snob. Mm. But really, truly, that's when we started talking. Mm. And so when I told him I wasn't around, now that's when we had started having calls and mm. phone calls. And I actually began to know him mm. when I was not in Kenya. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. And so a lot of the beginning of our relationship was virtual. Was virtual. Mm. Yeah, because I was in... Kenya and then now telling him, hey, by the way, my brother's kidney failure, I'm trying to donate my kidney. I was like, it's a bit mad. This is so beautiful to hear. Also, <laughs> yeah. given how, like, w- w- how you began this story with, like, your grandparents and then your parents even how they came to meet. And now you're meeting in a very virtual world, very different. Very different. That's yeah, true. Yeah, who'd have thought, you yeah. know, like the scenarios, the, the, the changes in, uh, in the world are affecting even how people are relating. That's so true. And so when you're in India, you're still communicating, you're still uh, on it, with each other. How is he taking this? I don't, he didn't know how to take it mm. uh, because many times I'd be on the phone with him and I would be venting about how, you know, it's, I'm trying to be strong for my brother. This is really tough, but I, you know, we're going to get through this. And he would just be on the phone quiet what do you say yeah he would not know Mm. what to say Mm. and i think sometimes it's a good thing Mm. because he would just be present which he continues to do Mm. uh to date because Mm. sometimes i don't want him to to fix anything Mm. or to say anything Mm. i just want him to listen Mm. not to self yeah. yeah. Don't be a Mr. Guys fixer. Have a way of yeah. fixing. I'm yeah. like, let's sort it uh, out. Just mm. listen. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So he has learned mm. that skill um, from the get go. Mm. And so I was actually meeting him really truly. Like I met him in passing a few times. Mm. And, and one of the first times that I noticed him, I was leading a session. Mm. Um, I was working for Search for Common Ground at right. the time. Mm. And it was a youth session. And so he walks in and he's late. Mm. He's late. Mm. And he's greeting people. I'm mm. like, who is this popular guy mm. interfering with my session? Mm. And so I, I just told him to please sit down, you know, and just um, not interfere with my session. Mm. And so he wondered, who is this chick who is so rude and also very direct? Mm. And so that's now one of the moments we began to, to talk. Mm. Yeah. Mm goes with you through but you have a very family you have a very strong f- family uh, just through that experience yes. and also a very good support system among each other which yes. which is a big deal which i mean it's it's, it's such a, a big, big deal. deal how does um returning now to siasa place happen mm. so after we get back after the successful surgery mm. Um, I'm really grateful because I had left the registration in the hands of Christine Dungo. Uh, so there was okay. like uh, mm. Dereba Mwangi, Mbukiburu. Mm-hmm. There are mm. people who were still continuing yeah. with Siasa Place. Mm. And so at this point now, the registration hadn't happened yet, mm-hmm. but I felt like I had more energy. Mm. This is now 2016, 17? Yeah, 2016. Mm. Mm-hmm. And so now I'm able to follow up mm. with the processes mm-hmm. and introducing the organization to different donors and doing activities. Mm. So now that I was present and, and fully engaged, mm. a lot really happened, especially right into 2017. Mm. Uh, because now I had trended once before mm. because Bonnie had recorded me in a video saying something. Mm. At passionately. power, yeah, mm. passionately mm. at mm. power. Mm. But then 2017 now mm. was mm. the first time I had been on TV. Mm. So now being on TV, 
that now just catapulted mm. me mm. In, in so many levels, mm, mm. yeah. And th that first experience on being on TV, what mm. was it for? Like, were you mm. going to speak ah. on behalf of young people on, on, on an issue? Yes, 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 mm -hmm. yes. So um, remember I talked about enjoying writing and blogging. Yeah. So when I came back, I would write opinions mm -hmm. for newspapers. Mm -hmm. They would never get published, mm. but I would write religiously. Mm. And I would write on things that I felt that were important, especially to young people. Mm -hmm. And so one day I get a call from, from Teddy Oteno first. Mm. And he says, you know, Nirima, I just wanted to know about this Yasa place. We see your articles coming in and we find them very interesting here. Uh, we actually read them. Mm. So keep doing what you're doing. Mm. And, and then the next time I get a call, I get it now from Larry Mado. Mm. And at the time he had uh, a show. The Trend. Yes. Mm. And so even before The Trend, because The Trend was on Fridays, he would do news. Mm. And so one night uh, he asked me, you know, I would like to have you on the political segment after mm. the news. Mm. Can you come? Can you come tonight? Mm. And so I just say yes. Mm. And, you know, I, I call my mom and I'm like, I accept it, but I don't know what I'm doing. Do I really mm -hmm. know? Mm. And, you know, she's like, no, no, you've got this. You know this. And, you know, I call Kina Shefa and, you mm. know, we begin to pray over the phone mm. <laughs> <laughs> for wisdom mm. and all that. But mm. I didn't eat. Mm. Um, I didn't eat. Yeah. <laughs> so I went, I looked for like a formal dress. Mm. And then that time my hair was orange and I had like a mohawk. Mm. So I'm like, there's nothing we can do about the hair. We mm. just have yeah. to yeah. go it's as we short are. It's notice, and so yeah, let's let's do this. <laughs> let's do this. Mm. So when I go uh, to the studio and all that, um, there's like a lounge. There are two gentlemen. They are catching up. They seem to know each other. And I sit there, and one of them I find out is a professor, and he says to me, "Young lady, you know what are you here for?" Mm. Unajua? Tunaingia kuongea siyasa. Mm. You know, we're about to talk about politics. Mm. And he says, this is not an entertainment show. Mm. Mm. And I don't say anything. I just look at him and I smile and I keep quiet. And so they call us now into studio. So by then, his whole statement has completely Marinated. disoriented. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, mm. maybe he's right. Maybe mm. I shouldn't be here. Maybe I'm in the wrong place. So I remember walking in to the NTV studios and just seeing all the cameras and the people. And I'm just like, do I even know, you know, what I'm doing? And so when we sit there and, you know, they realize I'm on their panel and, you know, I just prayed because I couldn't eat because my stomach was so all over the place. I felt like if I ate, I would throw up mm. on air. Mm. So I just said, you know what, let's just go hungry, hopefully. Mm it wouldn't growl too loudly. Mm, mm. And so after the interview started, I sort of relaxed and the rest is history. Mm, so mm. that was one of the first interviews Launching and then I kept mm, yeah, mm. getting uh, invited to more. More and more as um, on TV, they wouldn't call them a columnist, a panelist. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, mm, yeah. Mm. So you had, when you had left, CSA Place was still continuing. Mm -hmm. um, do you find it difficult to rejoin when you come back? Is, are the structures established a lot more? Do you find your mm. place nicely? It was actually when I came back, I was more disappointed on how not so much was done. Uh, hmm. Yeah, we hmm. were still stuck on trying to get the paperwork. Startup, yeah. Startup mode. Yeah, yeah hmm. startup. And the back and forth, you know, with the board where they they don't quite understand you know because the name siasa was rejected yeah. three times i can imagine yeah mm. and i was being told are you registering a political party mm. um are you trying to revolutionize the youth mm. and so there was a lot of tug and pull mm. and so i remember one day i call up the team and i say i'm giving up like i don't think we're going to be able to register this thing mm and they refused me to give up <laughs> they're like no you can't give up uh we've been pushing this too long mm. i mean bonnie was like you need to sue mm. already mm. and i remember just when i was like okay fine fine i'll give it one more shot the next day we received an email that our certificate was ready oh, okay 
mm-hmm. the like, next day. That was truly the 11th hour. <laughs> I know, mm. next day. Mm. So, uh, you know, that was now a peak mm. for us to mm. now f- be mm. recognized. Mm. Mm. And I do remember that we didn't have a space yeah. to work from. Mm-hmm. So we were hosted by Henrich Ball Foundation. Mm-hmm. So we worked there. Somewhere in Professor Portland? Wangari yeah. Madhai mm-hmm. Road. Yeah. So we were hosted there for a little while. Then we were hosted by Power 254 for a little while. Mm. So we were moving from offices mm. until we finally got our own space, mm-hmm. which was now 2017. Mm. That's now when we got our own office space and mm. that's where we are mm. right now, mm. uh, though we're planning to move mm. uh, early on this year. When you established what, what key things or key programs mm-hmm. were you seeking to do? The main ones, we call it Siasa Talks, where we would uh, meet with youth like a town hall setup, mm-hmm. um, just for them to get an understanding of, okay, what are your main issues? Yeah. And if they say it's garbage collection in my community, mm. then who's in charge of garbage collection? Mm. How can we hold them accountable? Yeah. Yeah. And just those step-by-step mm. processes mm-hmm. and organizing young people, mm. especially around the ward area, mm. is mm. what we started And that's on. the t- the most important unit. Yes. Because mm, that's where change yes. happens the most. Yes. Mm. And we've seen so much impact mm-hmm. uh, through those engagements that it's grown mm. to where now we sit on advisory committees with Senate mm-hmm. uh, and even working with county assemblies mm-hmm. specific mm. to youth priorities and policies. Mm-hmm. And because we have that um, grassroots connection still. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we still feel and we still believe mm-hmm. that youth groups, especially grassroots community groups, mm-hmm. are the pillar mm-hmm. of change in community. Mm-hmm. Your 2017 year, did you? I remember you being part of G-Activate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. I think that's where I first knew of you. Yeah. Because <laughs> then I was uh, working at SIF and we were processing stuff for for, CSA, uh, for, yeah, for, G-Activate, for G-Activate, which had you guys, it had, I think, Youth Clan mm-hmm. and others. Yeah. What's your... I just want you to walk through maybe some of the key things mm-hmm. and you have begun by saying, you know, how some of the CSA talks and what they've contributed to, but the the journey through, especially in programming. Mm. Mm. I think I would say that it's being flexible because Mm. what we started Mm. is not what we are. Uh, Yeah, you've morphed. We have morphed. Yeah. And that flexibility is super important Mm. because even when we came in with Mm G-Activate, we were brand new in the space Mm. and and G-Activate was one of the first to believe in our potentiality. Mm. And understanding that there are some people who are not good workers. Yeah. So at that <laughs> point is actually when Murabwa left, mm. you know, mm. because he was interested in vying for a position. Right. And he ended up not vying, mm. um, but he left the organization because he wanted to enter politics. Mm-hmm. And uh, slightly later, Shefa mm. Okore left as well, because mm. uh, now she ended up entering a different space, mm. caring about women's rights, mm. movement space. Mm-hmm. And it's okay. Mm. So a lot of people, mm were seasonal mm, mm. and and i think even when it came to programming mm-hmm. it was seeing that there are already existing youth groups mm-hmm. and youth organizations mm. and finding our niche mm. and our niche highly 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 felt on the digitization yeah. of democracy mm-hmm. and so we find that right now we are a very strong youth organization mm-hmm. that uses a lot of digital campaigns mm-hmm. for their work mm-hmm and online social media Mm. movements Mm. and supporting groups to Mm. understand Mm. how to create a link Mm. between what you do on the ground Mm. and translating that Mm. virtually. Mm. So that definitely changed. So as much as we started with the forums, Mm -hmm. which were a place for awareness, Mm -hmm. getting to know the information, Mm. and then the next step Mm. is actualizing, Mm. you know? Mm. Once people have this information, Mm. how can you link them with a key champion? And how can they become a key champion? Even entering Mm. politics is Mm. the next phase that we rolled into. Mm. Um, But I did recognize that I carried uh, what I enjoy, which is writing. So we have a lot of writing programs in Mm. CSA Place. Mm. Um, Mm. We try to create a space where we have young writers Mm -hmm. and now it's evolved into cartoonists. Mm spoken word artists Mm. um a way to express yourself Mm -hmm. uh because i felt that you know you can be young and and you look a certain way Mm. like 
maybe I look like someone who should be in entertainment industry or fashion. Mm. But no, I'm interested in, in discussing the politics of the world mm. and, and mm. governance mm. And, and what climate justice means for us yeah. and the future. Yeah. And so it's just creating that space that's fluid mm. and, and people don't feel judged that mm. I have to belong in a certain community by exactly. the way I mm. look. Mm. 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 And obviously with all of this comes many challenges. Mm. With, as, as you mentioned, you know, um, turnover, not necessarily of staff, but just even of like the founding team, the directors, uh, resource constraints at mm. times. What are some of the ones that give you the, have given you the most sleepless nights? The most sleepless nights, I think you, you're so passionate about this idea. Mm. And there are people who look at you and they, they don't see it. Mm. Or people not, not really believing in you mm. or banking on you. Mm. I think one of the toughest things I have seen is institutions that have been here for decades and the impact is so minimal. You can see where they're going wrong and you're like, I want to work with you. I want to help you because you are trusted because you have the credibility due to experience mm. and the years. So I found out that I was highly scrutinized mm. because what do you know? Yeah. You're young. I mean, and then there was also the the narrative of, ah, of course, she comes from a well-off family. Mm. That's how she's made it. Mm. I mean, mm. she was probably given that money mm. by her mm. uncle mm. or something. So, mm. of course, they created that for her to mm. just do that on mm. the side. Mm. So they don't believe in, in your hard work mm. and discipline. Mm. Mm. And so I found myself being very tough. I am very mm. tough mm -hmm. on my team. Mm. I am tough. Mm -hmm. And, and it's because I realize that we are in a different field here. Yeah. We're in a different field. Mm. So how I am judged, mm -hmm. you know, the way women are judged yeah. harshly. Yeah. yeah. So now being, imagine being a young woman running an organization mm. Mm. and then you're being There's given. association. Yeah. Mm. Association because mm. of my name mm. and my upbringing. And then of course people are like, this girl, she doesn't know anything, mm. you know? Mm. So it's just been handed to her. So mm. people, literally try to just make things hard for me mm. just to prove a point mm. and so i think which i have been challenging especially donor communities is yeah. to open up mm. um there are a lot of emerging amazing ideas mm. and platforms but because people cannot associate with them or do not yeah they will not bank on them mm. and you'll find resources going to very old institutions that don't do much with yeah. it yeah and there's this um there's this comfortable sense of mm. i know this person yeah. i've known them for years they, they, they've been bankable for many years for many years yeah so you don't even want to think starting something new mm. will take too much energy yeah. and effort mm. and work mm. and, and i don't want to do that work mm. so there's a laziness yeah in terms of who is supported mm. and who isn't mm. Mm. it's interesting you mentioned it being tough on your team for that because of understanding what's at stake um and also being tough, you know, like when you're calling out the ones with resources, how, how do you, how do you interpret the role of privilege? Just mm. in, uh, because you mentioned it a couple of times, at times just that name association um, can be positive. Then mm. there's a time when it's like playing a backlash role. I, I recognize that it's there. Mm. And we live in a country where unfortunately, names matter mm -hmm. and and i and names pray, betray you like I imagine. the famous yeah. saying goes uh -huh. and i and i honestly do pray that my child will have a future where it doesn't mm -hmm. because you don't choose where you get born yeah you don't choose mm. what you get named mm. and so the fact that my mother grew up in a very political family because her father was a minister and so matano mm. My mom joked once with me, she said, you know, after I grew up in a very political family, having my dad around so many politicians and growing up uh, around politicians' children, mm -hmm. I really wanted to marry someone who was far away from it. Mm. And then somehow, and behold. I know, <laughs> I marry your mm. dad. Mm. And then his brother becomes attorney general. It's like, mm. how did this happen? Mm. And so now that I think about it, mm -hmm. 
and now my husband in politics mm. i am pretty sure mm. this that young man this young man mm. ojiwa mm. um our lives will be political mm. as well mm. so it it followed me was that a discussion that you had with him um uh, with with your now husband mm-hmm. when you met yes mm-hmm. we've had discussions because his grandfather was a chief mm-hmm. and you know growing up i told you how i wasn't that open about yeah. my work on him mm-hmm. and it's because of it 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 brought attention that we didn't ask for mm-hmm. and and sometimes you'd have people who would try and treat you different and, and you didn't want it and then people who would automatically dislike you mm-hmm because of your name yeah. and and i just felt that as a child it was just too much mm. too soon mm. and and you know I, i openly discussed that with my husband and i say you know raising our son i hope that he grows up in an environment that he has his own name name and identity and identity so did you did that go into his naming yes mm. it went into his naming mm-hmm. and in fact even with his names were asked his name sound nigerian like mm. he doesn't even sound mm. kenyan uh, kenyan mm. like he's from here mm. uh, because for us we want him to build his yeah. own persona mm. and and not be sort of left to deal with what his parents have done yeah. and and sort of carry on this mm. pressure to carry on or mm. this pressure mm. of dealing with mistakes mm. that your parents have made mm. but i do recognize that the privilege exists mm-hmm. and i think that's why for me i intentionally choose to always recognize it mm-hmm. and even when we have our engagements it's an understanding of where are we and mm. who are we coordinating mm-hmm. with mm. and what is important for our people yeah and even with my own team mm. i know that there are people who i see online i get trolled a lot sometimes I can imagine. yeah mm. Mm. and and i see people especially there's a comment that was on facebook about this nerima that she's helping grassroots does she know anything about it mm. sort of um, like uh, first first ladies uh, first uh, first daughter Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 I really laughed mm. because I was like if you saw the work that we do yeah. mm. in the community mm-hmm. I probably know much more mm. than you. Mm. But who is here measuring with mm. a thermometer? Mm. It's mm. fine. Mm. Mm. So people will always have their own opinions on yeah. things. Yeah. And a lot of people have this opinion because they don't know me. Right. They have personally never met me. Yeah. They don't know yeah. a thing yeah. about me mm. and and they would be surprised that in my life mm. I do much more to help people around me mm. than they do mm. Mm. and I do it because mm. I want to do it yeah. and it's not something that mm. I feel mm. it's it's gets a reward or mm. anything like that mm. because mm. this is a thankless job yeah. no one is going to come and tell you thank you so much for holding the government accountable now I actually have water no mm. one is going to come mm. and thank you mm. they'll just see their water and they'll be yeah. like oh, And There's more you have to wake up and think yeah. about another constitu- constituency member <laughs> exactly. who needs a particular change and then you have to go and do yeah, the same it's, cycle it's again. Yeah, it's a very thankless job. Yeah. So there's nothing I'm gaining from it. I'm I'm here because I want to be here. Mm. And so what keep what's that then that keeps you going even when the trolling is happening, the challenges, at times resources. I don't know how COVID impacted mm. on your work, mm. but when all of these other things that could potentially derail are, are happening, What is it that keeps you going? It's it's my faith. Mm. I I'm very grounded in faith mm-hmm. and it's because I know I'm not answerable to man. Yeah. And and I know when my time is up, mm. I have somebody that I have to answer to. Mm. And I feel what happened to my brother at such a young age mm. also just showed me how life can be short mm. because he got a second chance. Mm. And it's one of those things where we do not take for granted. Mm. So even with my brother or even my family, mm. if if we are with each other, yeah. we are with each other. Mm. And so I think for me, I just viewed life so differently. Mm. And and even when when I was driving yesterday, um, someone just swerved in front of me. And normally you would get road rage and mm. be like, "What are you doing?" Nah, nah, nah. I just said. We pick a good fight this mm. is not it this is not it they this could be going through it. their own issues they are mm. this is not the fight mm. and so i think for me my my relationship with god mm. keeps me so grounded mm. 
and i do understand that there is another life and this life that i'm living is not mine so even when we were blessed with a child every day i pray that i raise this child how god wants me to raise this child because mm. he is not mine mm. and i'm grateful that god chose me to raise him mm. and so that's just how yeah. i view life that's really nice and i want to get back into that family uh, dynamic a little bit um family faith dynamic but not before we wind up uh, mm-hmm. on on, on siasa place uh the quest one what, two, two things i'm 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 seeking to understand and i know our viewers also would probably like to is um in this field in the in the ngo cso space there is often a lot of um mm-hmm. misunderstanding from from the public often that you are in it because there is you you are answering to a particular foreign agenda you are answering you have foreign resources following you and um and so it can limit mm. because the, the reality of it is that funding is never enough mm. for just the kind of impact that we, we would like to be making how has that whole aspect of looking for resources mm. um doing grant making um allocating resources in a in, in a pool or deciding to who will work in the in the team and stuff like that have mm. you had how has that journey been for you and now i think the person yeah. i'm thinking about even as you answer this is that leader who, who an emerging leader who is starting up um a grassroots focused mm. piece of social impact um organization or someone who because covid has um done its thing uh, is unable to like recover or now because there is a lot of shift of donor resourcing uh, but also someone who is probably receiving the resources but then the association again is that you are in this because of the money the money yeah first of all it is so hard to start an organization tell me about that yeah <laughs> mm. so even when when i meet young people and they say i want to be my own boss i want to build a company i look at them i'm like are you sure mm. um because i think we look at the success the end, yeah. the end mm. and you know people don't know that in mm. three years i didn't have a salary mm. in, in three years we were literally if a donor would support an activity so we, it is that to, yeah, yeah activity you're buying six sausages yeah. for 12 people and and that's it and that's it so a lot of us relied on the transport mm. which we negotiated for mm. and it's not yeah. a lot of and it's not it's actually transport to get to you and then to the there's pocket change maybe yeah. to have an ice cream exactly <laughs> <laughs> so so I always tell young people that for me leading an organization is one of the hardest things I've ever done. Mm. I sometimes wake up and wish I was an employee mm. because I won't have to worry about getting salary because now I worry about 12 people. Mm. I have a team of 12 mm-hmm. and and we work in 12 counties. Mm. And so if someone was to tell me that 5 years from now your organization would be this big and this is how much you'd be earning annually mm. i would say that's not true mm. that's a lie that's not going to happen yeah it's not going to happen mm. so for me i was really just looking at the impact i can make now mm-hmm. around me i wasn't even looking at the mountain mm. and so suddenly you wake up and you're like oh oh wow i'm i'm on a mountain mm. Mm. and and even with leadership i have had to call myself to several personal meetings personal mm. meetings hey nerima hi mm. <laughs> uh because i lost a social life mm. when i started siasa place i didn't have it i've just told you the only way i met my husband is because i had to leave to go to the us to go and watch and take care of my brother mm. and i had some downtime mm. if my if that didn't happen to my brother i wouldn't have met my husband interesting that is the truth mm. because i was so focused on on building siasa place that sometimes i would start my day as early as 7 a.m. Mm. and i'm here consulting for search for common ground mm-hmm. and then i'm leaving at 3 p.m. Mm. to go to town mm. to work on siasa place and that means i was getting home at almost 11 p.m. Mm. Mm. 
So on weekends when people are hanging out mm. and going out, yeah. I wasn't. Yeah. And I was writing it. articles. Yeah. I was writing concepts mm. and sharing budgets. Mm. So I worked a lot. Mm. And and even now I still do. Mm-hmm. I, I've just found a way to balance and put in mm. time for family. Mm. But I think if it was about the money, mm. I would have left mm. a lot. Mm. I mm. can be working for some major company, not even here. Yeah, you had the education, I mean, you had the exposure, seriously. you had the name, like whatever. I had, yeah, I had it all. Mm. I, I could have picked to live in UK if I wanted to, mm. or Japan. Mm. So I yeah, love it. you love it. I love it. Mm. And I would probably be working on a job that gave me weekends mm. off. Mm and vacations vacations mm, paid mm, mm. and so i had access to that mm, and mm. and it's it's not what i'm passionate about mm. so i'm genuinely passionate about the work that i do mm. and i think that's the beginning once you're passionate that fire it keeps things going for you mm. because you're just like no it's mm. it's who i am mm. and and it won't let you sit back mm. but i gave myself three years mm-hmm. I gave myself three years. Mm-hmm. I said, if Siasa Place doesn't get support in three years, mm. if I can't build a team in three years, mm. where not all of us are volunteering mm. in three years, mm. I have to call it quits. Mm. And and it's the same advice mm. I gave to Bina Maseno mm. when she was starting yeah. Badili Africa. Yeah. And she was sort of in the middle because you know you are interested in starting a business but mm. also here you're side hustling mm. so you're not giving it a hundred percent sometimes yeah. and i told her you know give badili three years yeah if it doesn't mm. launch mm. drop it mm. look at it now yeah we're glad we've had a conversation yeah. with her and it's it's grown yeah, yeah. Mm. and so i did have to have that meeting with myself mm. But I think also something that I'm talented in Mm -hmm. is identifying the right people to work with me Mm. because you have to have a good team. And the people who are on my team, not all of them have gone to school. Mm -hmm. And I'll sit in an interview and I will know, no. This is the person, this one is not. Yes, Mm. I've been gifted. What are the, because that's an X factor. Yes. So I know it's hard to pin it, but what, what, that's why you say at times you know it, mm. what is it though that for you you will you get i'll get mm. i genuinely look for what's passionate in a person and i see if your passion matches with my passion mm. there's only one individual um, on my team who i hired mm. and he was in the wrong position mm. and there was so much back and forth he mm. was just not able to meet deadlines mm. he's struggling mm. And I saw mm. he's super passionate with design mm. and graphics mm. and we created a position mm. and, and now and and it, roles. Yeah. Mm. And they said, look here. Mm. I went to the board, mm. said, look here, this mm. guy, mm. I don't want to let him go. Mm. He's really good at this. How about we create this position for him? Mm. And now, even as recently as yesterday, I had a whole other regional organization reach out to us and say, mm. We want your graphics person. Can we partner Mm. and you guys do our graphics? Mm. Mm. And I was like, that's it. Mm. And so once you find what someone is passionate about, Mm -hmm. it's no longer about Mm. work. Mm. Mm. It's no longer about work. It's about now sharpening their skill. How can I be better at this? Mm. And now you are meeting at a point where Mm. you're both happy. And so for some people, it's money. I I like a better pay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I like a better pay. Mm. So for me, for the people that I work with, mm-hmm. I like to know mm. what makes you tick. Yeah. And and I figure out mm. how can we meet mm. halfway with it. We're living in a time of um, conversations around equity. And um, already I think by exhibiting that you can bring people in the team who uh, would be otherwise not be employable for yeah. maybe education reasons or <laughs> staff true. that you're already creating room for um for equity but what's your reflection around the whole mm-hmm. especially in this development sector of ours what's your reflection around um issues of diversity mm. and inclusion equity belonging mm. um yeah what is how do you reflect on them mm. and beyond just your gender and beyond just your agenda in governance what 
what's the role of it and where are we in your in from where especially as a country kenya mm. where do you feel we are we have a long way to go mm -hmm. as as a country itself mm -hmm. um, but even within the work that we do mm -hmm we do talk about diversity frequently right. and the intentionality mm. of being diverse. Mm -hmm. So because politics, we find it's very male dominated, mm. we intentionally say we need more women in mm. this space. Mm. But even as recently as our last board meeting mm -hmm. in the last quarter mm. last year, mm. we talked about what is diversity to us, yeah. which communities haven't we reached out to, mm. And do we need to reach out to mm. and how do we reach out to mm. so even within the board mm -hmm. itself mm. we have someone who one of my board members she's from the nubian community oh, okay yeah and she said you guys did i win. married a nubian queen so you I, see? I, I, i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> yeah and she was like you see you guys last year mm. i you know i pushed the idea of working with the nubian community mm. and you came in and you worked with us mm. you're one of the organizations that now mm. you're recognized within our community. Mm. So let's do a step further. Mm. So we challenge ourselves mm -hmm. to which community haven't we mm. worked with mm. that we need to. Mm. And, and I think even when we talk about diversity, mm -hmm. it's changing because of the access to technology. Yes, because yes. mm. now we don't necessarily have to go physically mm. to this community. Mm. Mm. And, and how is our content mm. uh, reaching communities mm. and how do we share this better mm. and how do we coordinate this mm. better? Mm. So I would say it's always learning mm -hmm. and going to the drawing board and seeing what are other people doing? What can I do better? Mm. And what is our niche? Yeah. And we do not copy. Mm. I, I cannot look at someone else and say, I want to do what they're doing. Duplicate, yeah. I do not. Mm, yeah. Mm, because mm. I feel there's so much room. Yeah. For uniqueness yeah. and new, new, new things, new approaches. Exactly. Mm. And there's enough. Mm. So why should I duplicate what somebody else is doing? Yeah. And so when, if you reflect back slightly before we move into now family, if you reflect back and um, identify what you are the m most proud of, for, oh, wow. for Siasa Place and for the work that you've done. And I was also curious which, which are the 12 counties and what's like the work, but maybe as you answer that, you can tell us what what is, what do you look back and, mm. and commend yourself for and the team for for achieving? Mm. There, there, are na there are many because mm. we formed a youth serving organizations consortium mm now that has about 30 organizations and it's growing mm. and not just 30 organizations in governance in governance in governance in everything yeah right anything that has to do with youth yeah. so we have peace agriculture mm. governance health. education mm. health Beautiful. everything mm. and it's still growing mm. and our newest members are from isiolo mm. so to think that you know mm. Um, if we're in Isiolo, that means in the next year, yeah. hopefully, we're mm. across the whole country. Mm. And also, we have sued uh, government before, mm. and we have won. Mm. Uh, that was a big highlight. What was the story? Um, it was an appointment mm. under President Uhuru Kenyatta, mm -hmm. under the National Employment Authority. Mm -hmm. And he had appointed um, Mary Wamboe Munene. Mm -hmm. and we didn't feel that she was qualified mm. because most youth are unemployed. Mm. And so we felt that it needed a chair mm. that knew mm. what they were doing. Mm. And so that is also a highlight for us. Yeah, and it's a change. Yeah. yeah and it, 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 it matters a lot. Thank you for doing that. It matters. Yeah. Mm. And so we've also had several youth organizations being mentored mm. by us mm -hmm. and, you know, growing and attributing their foundation mm. to our mentorship mm. Mm. in Mombasa, mm. in Kericho, we mm. have formed networks mm. that are now working with county assemblies. Mm. There are just there are just so many things mm. that mm. has made me proud to mm. be part of mm. CSA Place. Mm. Mm. And you're closing in on um, hitting out of 35. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, how, when you look at the future of CSA Place and mm -hmm. your future, what do you see? I don't see. Mm. I don't see. Mm. And and for me, that's the joy. Mm. Um, what I'm working on is a space where young people belong mm. and young people create. Because mm 
because our slogan is inventing the future right and so for me it's not to create a predicted future yeah. mm. for me is to create an environment that they're able to think outside the box regardless of any scenario regardless. and what are the possible scenarios though a center mm -hmm. a center mm -hmm. where people can really home. learn home mm. and call home mm. they need to learn more mm. so that's what i see for siasa place mm. and mm. and that's why our new space mm. has more space mm. so that people can come learn mm. about history learn mm. about laws mm. learn about policies mm. and learn about how they can engage mm. in their own yeah. communities in their own everyday life yeah and you serve and sit on and speak at various high level yeah and um yeah. events and uh, uh, some Ooh. of which are and what what which, which one do you think oh my god about you look back and you're like Ooh. i think the so i'm currently on four boards mm -hmm. and i have not even counted i sit on embassy advisory councils mm. uh, but i think the big one for me was in 2022 last year mm -hmm. when i was appointed by the national cohesion and integration commission mm -hmm. uh to represent the youth on the ncic mm. the kenya eminent persons panel come on come on yo kayamba is this ah! kayamba kayamba <laughs> that one mm. that one mm. because i was i was sitting mm. on platforms of people that mm. have read about yeah. or uh yeah read mm. about mm. Mm. <laughs> because not we met. are not in yeah, the same exactly. space yeah and to sit in the same panel with generals mm. um to discuss the country mm. and to discuss the piece mm. of transition mm. and what to do next i think for me i really appreciate dr kobia mm -hmm. uh to even appoint me in that mm. board mm. in that commission mm. and even when we would have meetings my voice mattered mm. it mattered you mm. can sit in task force panels mm. and you are token mm. but for me in that mm. one mm. my voice mattered mm. it was mm. what do we need to do yeah. what are your thoughts on this mm. give us your opinion and and i had a lot of imposter syndrome mm. can imagine a lot mm. and it never quite stops does ah! it? <laughs> it doesn't yeah. it yeah. doesn't yeah. but to be accepted mm. by generals and mm. judges mm. and commissioners yeah. Uh, made me feel like okay i have something here yeah. i think that was the one where i was that's, like <laughs> that's 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 incredible that's beautiful in all of this you also um it's not now a young family but um i remember let me connect the the parts you met uh <laughs> your boo <laughs> uh online mm -hmm. and then um there is everything that happened and uh at what point now did you start for me in a family mm. and who is he and what would you like to talk about him <laughs> <laughs> so so billion ojiwa um he has a center in madare mm. and and also a politician mm -hmm. um but then when we met i met him at a government session right. that i was leading mm -hmm. he says he met me at one of Bonnie's functions at Power 254 mm. but I didn't see him. Mm. Uh he actually traced the picture mm. and took a picture and he drew where he was sitting mm. and he circled to where I was sitting. I believe him more. <laughs> I believe his version more any like, any time. I was I am... there. <laughs> <laughs> I do not remember him at that meeting. There is evidence. I know he has evidence. <laughs> yeah. Um but then now when I I I left mm. for the US because of my brother and mm. then India. Mm. So we would talk virtually. Okay. So mm. when I came back, mm -hmm. when I came back, see he's clever mm. because when he sent me a message on facebook he didn't start off like oh i think i like you can we talk can we hang no mm. he sent me a documentary that featured him oh come on mm. Mm. clever mm. Mm. so he's like oh there's a documentary about me that's come out it's just come out and i would like to hear your opinion on it since you have a background in communication mm. i said okay yes I sl I sl I sl slide that in very easy. I know. Yeah. So me I'm over here I'm thinking it's it's work. Okay, yeah, I can yeah. do this. Mm. And so we started talking from there. Mm. It was after his documentary and yeah. just giving him feedback on mm. it. Now mm. we started talking. And so when I came back to Kenya, mm. I met him for the first time now 
now face to face. Mm. And the interesting thing about Billion is he showed me who he was from the get go. Mm. And so here I am, I've always grown up on Gong Road mm. and never really left Kilimani area. Mm. And he's like, I want to show you where I live. Mm. And we went to, he lived near, what's the name of the road? Maziwa. Oh, Maziwa okay. near. Mm. Embakasi, those sides? Yeah. No? Not really Embakasi, no. It's near, there's a very famous estate there. It's like a committee. Ah, road. Okay. I've forgotten the name right, of that side. estate. Mm -hmm. It's on the other side. Mm, mm. Me, I had never been on that side of, mm. of Maziwa mm. or... And so he shows me, you know, this is where I live. Mm. And I have a center in Madari. He mm. showed me center. You He's went like, to Madari, so... Uh -huh. That was my first time in Madari. Mm. And I also brought my family to Madari for mm. the first time. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is a whole other experience. I can <laughs> imagine. <laughs> My parents are like, what are we doing? <laughs> anyway. Really, they were afraid? And... They were just like, what is this? What world is this? Like, my dad was like, you do not know this world. Because Billion took me to Akibanda. Yeah. That was my first time. Oh, come on. I like So, you. we had lunch in Akibanda. He yeah. was like, this is who I am. Uh, you know, this is what I'm about. To see and the I know. And yeah. I'm, I'm not going to try and yeah. show you yeah. a life that I'm, I'm not about. Yeah. And, and I remember he had a, a Toyota then, which mm. looked like it was on the verge of breaking down. <laughs> Every day. I know. <laughs> because he came and picked me up in it. And yeah. so... At least he was driving, but now he was driving. I'm from the 46. I know, he was driving. <laughs> yeah. And so, and that's how we started to get to know each other. So I think the beginning with Billion was very serious and straight to the point. Mm. Uh, and I think it's because of the virtual... Uh, conversations that we yeah, had yeah. so we knew a lot about each other mm. before meeting mm. and he was very clear mm. that me I'm looking to start a family mm. I, I don't want I, I'm not playing around I'm not beating around the bush mm. so we kept our relationship very private mm -hmm. people didn't know mm. we were dating mm. we didn't have any images any trace of it even to date you you can't find a, we've put our relationship like married mm. to each mm. other on mm. Facebook. Yeah. It's not there. Mm. And so we would put pictures of each other sometimes. Mm. Unless you know us, you know we are mm. together. Mm. And so the reason for all of that, it's so funny because I told you my first time on TV, I was interviewed by Larry Mado. Mm. Uh, Larry Mado and my husband are very mm. good friends. Mm. They're like most best friends. Mm. So anytime he's in the country, mm. he goes they and hang they hang out. Mm. And so when Larry found out that we were engaged, he could not believe it. He's like, <laughs> how is this happening? How? Mm. He's like, how? Mm. And the two most unlikely people to be together. Yes. Yeah. He's like, you mean I know you both? Yeah. Like in different spaces. Yeah. Mm. So it's something that we continue to date mm. where we intentionally keep our relationship. We try to, because mm. at one point it but yeah. we try to mm, mm. keep our relationship as private as possible mm. um, because we feel if you feed the public about your relationship, yeah. they will always want mm. uh, yeah. more. And, and then it's more bad. Yeah, they, they're yeah. not interested in your relationship. Mm. Mm. They're, just, they're interested in the negative of yeah. your relationship. Yeah. And so we're like, why begin to mm. show you in the first place? Mm. Mm. And so that's something that we've always done. Mm. But I remember that after we got married, mm -hmm. the choice of where to live was mm -hmm. such a huge conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine. Yeah. So I moved to Maziwa. Mm -hmm. We stayed there for maybe six months. Mm -hmm. And by then, me, I don't have a car. I'm mm -hmm. using a mat. Mm -hmm. And sometimes Billion would drop me and mm -hmm. all that. Mm -hmm. And I remember my parents having a conversation with me and they say, you know what? It's it's good that you're starting together mm. and building together. Mm. And I hope that you have a life that he can take care of you. Mm. And I hope that you won't put pressure on him to give you a life that you're used to. I hope you will have the patience for him to grow to that. Mm. And, and I do hope that we've raised you in a way that you bring that same stability for your child. Come on. Mm. Yeah. 
And so our next apartment, because I got frustrated with Maziwa, mm. the truth, mm. uh, because of the distance. Mm. And I was just, I was working in town mm. and, and it was just like the neighborhood. I didn't know it. Mm. <laughs> mm. And I was like, I'm not used to living in apartments with many people. And I grew up in a house, mm. very quiet. Mm. And so I was like, what is halfway? Mm -hmm. So halfway for us, which was a fight, mm. uh, we moved to a very small one bedroom mm. in Parklands. Mm. And I remember him saying, I don't know if I'm ready for Parklands. Mm. And me being, no, we are, we'll work on it together. We'll do this together. Mm. We lived in Parklands for one year and we now moved again mm. to Ruaka. Mm. Now Ruaka, mm. we were both like, we are okay. We are okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> because it was a mix of both worlds yeah. for us. And, yeah. and for me, that was a huge lesson mm. um, on marriage, mm. on our marriage and just finding the compromise because it's a lot about compromise yeah. and where we are both comfortable. Yeah. And us not feeling that we have to be keeping up with appearances yeah. and keeping up with a lifestyle that mm. we're not ready for. Mm. And, and out of that now, we've been married five years, it's going on six. Mm. Now we've, we've bought land, mm. we've built, mm. We, mm. we're now in a place where we're like, we're okay. And as your folks said, you've worked on it together. Yeah. Yeah, you've been yeah. patient with each other yeah. to work towards that. That's a, I mean, that's, um, I'm married 13 years now, I guess, or something. I, wow. keep, I lose track. But that's a huge lesson that you only learn at times much later. Especially for, and I commend him too, I commend you a lot, you know, for choosing to sort of, you know, say, I will, I'll, 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 I'll come to where, you know, we you can are. start together. And I commend him for so, <laughs> identifying okay, up. Yeah. Marrying up <laughs> is, 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 uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's work. <laughs> <laughs> it's work. Yeah, it's work, but it's beautiful at the end when no, you, you I love sort of it. I love it and, so much. Yeah. I love it. I, I, and how do you find, you mentioned it earlier that you you, 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 you try to find, to schedule your day and time yeah. uh, to ensure that there's time for family, both mm. your nuclear now and also the family you come from. Mm. What, are, what goes into that for you with the kind of work that you're doing, mm. with the kinds of demands? And then the fact that you say he's also a politician yeah. and running for office in perhaps, uh, you know, where he need to be is, um, is, is a lot more different from, from what you would, you know, like ordinarily be doing. So there's a lot going on in both your mm. lives. You have, a, you, have a, you have a young baby. How does, what, what factors mm. into all of this for you? and into all of this for balance for you guys. Yeah, it's the fact that um, organized helps a lot. Mm. And I also have a really good support system. Mm -hmm. um, like even when I knew when my son was old enough for us to have a nanny, mm -hmm. I knew that the kind of nanny I have to have is someone who is also organized like me. Mm. If we go off schedule, mm. it will be crazy it's crazy mm. and and this is the reason why the good thing is we don't have a tv mm. at home mm. and and it also minimizes because mm. we have a deal that when our son is in front of us our phones are away mm. so it's it's interaction mm. so we understand that when we have short time with him it's intense mm. It's intense time mm. with my child mm. and and it's the eye contact i'm mm. with you mm. we're interacting mm. i'm playing with you i'm singing mm. so we have a lot of singing in our house because mm. uh, we depend on the radio mm. and so we have a lot of interaction and conversation mm. this was a conscious decision to actually because i remember being i was mentioning it to actually plug out the yeah TV we have from. no tv it's but plugged. you plugged it out like yeah it's you... in a box <laughs> we have no tv mm. and and if we do want screen time it's our own screen time mm. and it's because i have things that i enjoy like you look at us you would think 
who is action it's me mm. <laughs> so there are things that i want mm. to watch mm -hmm. and him is on football mm. so we have our own mm. screen time mm. that we feel okay mm. this is my individual time mm. and so my days start very early mm -hmm. in our house mm. uh even my son he's up by sometimes 5 30 mm. sometimes 6 a.m and he's only two he's two wow yeah so the whole house we are we are very early risers early Mm. risers mm. and and i know like i really try to start with meditation mm -hmm. and prayer mm. to just center myself mm. before the rat race mm -hmm. and after about 30 minutes an hour of that mm. i now spend it with my son mm. so i have very early morning mm. play catch time mm. catch-ups mm -hmm. with him when he wakes up mm. then now i go to work mm. like from seven mm. And so when I come back home, I try to come back home early mm -hmm. uh, because I know that our son sleeps early. Mm -hmm. He's in bed by eight. Mm. So we both try to rush home mm. before eight. That's really good. Mm. So that we can spend even, because he has dinner at mm. seven, mm. so that we can spend seven to eight mm. just now mm. interacting. Winding down the day. Yes, mm, because uh, I realized that there are parents who might be home with their children, but they are not home. Yeah, you are there the whole day, but hey. They're not mm. home. They are not home mm. and and we recognize the intentionality of time mm. uh, because like sunday is our day in mm. fact you know billion says sunday is family day mm. so after church we go swimming we walk in the park mm. we hang out mm. and so because we also feel that sunday is the only day mm. that i can breathe mm. and he can breathe mm. as a politician he might have to go for a church service mm but the afternoon is mm. free. Mm. So I think because I recognize that my time is limited, mm. I also do things immediately if I can. Mm. And so I'm in chamas, mm. I'm in Sijui, different life groups mm. with church. Mm. And so, especially my chama, I'm always somehow a secretary mm. or I'll be the chair lady. Mm. So if we have a meeting, if there are minutes, I will do the minutes mm. then and there. Mm. So the way I try and schedule my time is, especially like in the office, mm. my team knows I don't like walk-ins mm. because mm. you have interrupted with my flow. Mm. Like I rather have like a day. A schedule. Yeah. Mm. Tuesday, mm. you mm. walk in. Mm. Tuesdays, I'll do it walk-in. Mm. I will greet you. I'll mm. say hello to you. Mm. I'll hang out with you. Mm. But mondays mm. i can't mm. because it's it's catch up so mm. even my team mm. Mm. they're like oh no i walk in mm. maybe you come tomorrow just come back tomorrow she'll be here and mm. she'll be fully with you mm. Mm. but today she has to do mm. catch-ups mm -hmm. so i really try and do that but mm. because i have a really supportive nanny mm -hmm. uh she's the been, same from yeah. the past that you got yes the mm. same mm. and you know we've worked together she's understood how i am mm. And so we have been together since my son was two months. Mm. And so my son, his diet or our diet, it's a very clear schedule. Mm. And this helps mm. because if I'm shopping, it's, it's one time. Yeah. And for the week, I am not wasting time yeah. on what's for dinner? Tunapika yeah. nini? Ulinunua nini? That wastes so much time, yeah. Yeah. especially for women mm. who lead mm. organizations. Mm. Because you are literally leading the home mm. as well mm. and managing home. Mm. And so that has cut out a lot of time mm. for me. Mm. So if she's going to call me, I'll call her maybe midday to find out how my son is doing. Mm. But I know mm. he's out, he's in the sun right now. Mm. He's in play group right now. Mm. He's like, I know mm. his schedule. Yeah. And so she's also very secure mm. on what his schedule that's really good looks like my wife calls uh, a good nanny her wife <laughs> she says yeah max you need to get me a good wife <laughs> <It's> <laughs> because true. i mean yeah to, to be balanced that way you require uh, as as you say like an extremely good level of organization yes because then you know riwa would be wondering how things are yeah. so you're you're functioning you then are able to function better as a wife yes and better also as a mother as a mother and whatever other things that you do in life yeah mm. because even with the schedule like a lot of people like, oh that's so strict why on a schedule mm. children actually like schedules they do 
because they know what's happening next. Yeah. Oh, they randomness know, oh, with children is should be oh, the exception, oh, not the norm. Yeah, yeah, they like schedules, yeah. and and because he sleeps at eight, mm. I can now use. They probably may the not even like they need. They need and it. And at times it's not about them liking. Yeah, it's, they need it. What 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 human being will you be? So like, get organized. You yeah. Go to, if there wasn't such kind of, I mean, you are able to leave the country young. Yes. If there wasn't like uh, you know a, a proper planning, it would have been very difficult for I you to. I wouldn't have managed. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't mm. have been able to graduate. Mm, exactly. I wouldn't, and so because he sleeps early, mm. I also have a lot of free time. Yeah. Because I sleep around eleven, mm. so now yeah. I can choose: Do I yeah. want to read a book? Yeah. Do I want to catch up on some work? Mm. Do mm. I want to watch a movie? Mm. And so that helps me rest. Yeah. And then I really, really, really try not to work on weekends mm. so i don't bother my team unless it's necessary mm. and they don't bother me mm. unless it's necessary mm. so the weekends are are locked yeah. and so that's now when mm. i will try and check up on friends mm. check up on my brother mm. hang out with him or mm. do the things that i find mm. fun to do yeah but if i wasn't organized mm. i wouldn't be able to mm. manage mm. and and my sister she's always said you can't have it all yeah you can't mm. and so i can't be the present mother mm. that i wish to be mm. that i'm there with you all the time every day mm. Mm. because i am working yeah. yeah and so we already know mm. like me and my sister and mm. how we've been raised mm. you can't have it all mm. but you can balance you can do the best you can do with the what best. life has dealt yeah. to you yeah Wonderful. I mean, listening to you is very inspirational, and um, I'm here thinking, I, I hats off to you for leading young, for uh, taking it all, um, taking what life has dealt you, taking it and making beautiful out of it. Earlier on, when you were catching up off camera, you you, you said you know like you choose your battles in a very Mm. like how is this going the, going to be it will be a good day what mm. what how is this year going to be there are many things that are happening it's going to be a good year just the positivity that you carry and that you inspire the um both at a family level at a health level you know mental physical at a um at at you know leadership level in your organization it it purely is inspirational and thank you for sharing your journey with us i'll 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 give you the the the, the honors to close it up for us but i just want mm. to say um even with the work that you're doing with um siasa place and the fact that you know you're you're creating futures mm. futures that uh, we all can walk in futures that our children in a very fast moving world can walk into and find a sense of security and stability development challenges that are not the same that you are dealing with maybe that are for their time but also consciously creating a better world out there but also mm. con con consciously creating a better world and a mm. better child to thrive in that that's a really important thing and i i'm, I'm grateful to just have sat here and been a, a listener to this and so i don't know what you would like to say as your mm. as your concluding remarks but it is with you and thank you for joining development dynamics with maxi thanks maxi mm. i think for me is thank you for encouraging me to do this i normally don't share um about me and i'm normally the person who takes care of things and people around me so it's it's a learning process for me mm. and you've you've opened up that side to me and i appreciate it write your book <laughs> 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 yeah. I appreciate it mm. but also I also appreciate you know even people like you where how I view view life it's it's like a tapestry right like so there are so mm. many different strings that have different colors and so we don't see the entire design mm. but you as a string me as a string mm. we make an impact on the overall mm. design yeah. and and I feel sometimes in life especially you know if we were to look at people who are leaders they if we were to compare them to like a mountain right they are the peak so often times we we focus on the peak like even when we look at mount kenya mm. we're looking at the snow at the peak and people want to embark it and climb to the top of it 
but we forget that that peak wouldn't exist without the rock that makes the base mm. and and for me i really appreciate the people mm. and the teams mm. and a lot of support systems around us that forms the base mm. and sometimes people don't even realize they are a base for you mm. and it's it's recognizing that the base is as important as the peak because mm. without the base the peak would not exist absolutely yeah, yeah. so your work I, I love that it's magnifying that mm. and mm. I've really enjoyed having this conversation. And I'm hopeful that in three, four years, eight years, whenever next, we can see it and add on to the Amen. reflections um, with, with greater insights and with time. Uh, for as long as I can continue to do this, this is my passion project. Yeah. I, I love it. I get inspired. I learn a lot. I get to reflect and um, so thank you for honoring us once again <laughs> and we are out.